Howdy, y'all. This is Fran Agulto with the developer relations team here at WP Engine on the headless side of the house. And I'm continuing my focus on Next.js 14 with the app router. And in this video, we're gonna go over the app router and auth support in Faust.js, the headless WordPress framework with Next.js 14. Now, Next.js 14 introduces a new paradigm in the project structure and the development of sites and applications. With the new version of Next being adapted, Faust and our Faust team also decided we must coincide to support this. Now in this video, we're gonna go over these bullet points here um, with an overview of stable server actions, WP GraphQL mutations with server actions, auth, Apollo client experimental support, using client components, and nested layouts. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. Just a precursor to benefit from this video before we dive right in, you should be familiar with the basics of WordPress development, WP GraphQL, Next.js, and Apollo client. Now, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is configure your WordPress site. I've already done this. Now, I set up a WordPress site on WP Engine, but you can do it on any host of your choice. Local is a good one too, if you just want a free WordPress server locally. Next thing is install the plugins necessary, and we're gonna need two here. We're gonna need WP GraphQL and Faust.js. So if we just go over to add new here, on the left-hand side of the hamburger menu, and then we're going to search for WP GraphQL. That should pop right up in the menu. There it is. I've already done this, but I'm just walking you through on what to search for. And here's Faust.js and that should populate up too. Go ahead and install and activate those plugins. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is go over to the Faust.js documentation and Within that documentation, you're gonna go over to the app router experimental uh, tutorial, and then you're just gonna paste this npx command into your command line. In this case, I'm using terminal for Mac. I've already done this, but that's where you would go to do so. And once you do that, it's gonna walk you through the set of steps that you need to connect WordPress and your GraphQL endpoint to your Faust front end. Essentially what you're gonna do is once it spins up, you're gonna make a copy of the env local file here. And within this .env.local file, you're gonna put in the three variables here um, that you need from your plugins that you installed. The first one is the D GraphQL endpoint. You're gonna find that in the GraphQL settings and here's the public endpoint. And then you are going to go over to settings and there's the Faust option. And when you select that, you're gonna have your front end site URL and the secret key and I'll regenerate that after this video is done. And once you do that, you're gonna go into back into your code editor and into your .env.local file, and you're gonna paste those three variables in this local file. Okay, now that's all done. That will connect your front end to your back end. Now that we have everything configured, let's take a look at the file structure within the Faust Experimental App Router and PX package here on the boilerplate. Now we have route segment, dynamic route segment, and authentication out of the box. Let's go take a look at this. So within the root of the app directory, we have our home page here, which is reflected by page.tsx file, the new naming file method in Next.js 13. And then we have a my account route segment here. And within this my account route segment, we have a page.tsx file as well to render that on the user interface. And there is also a couple of things that I've added that we'll go over in the video later. And then with the auth, we have the login functionality here out of the box with its log own 
login page in a server action with actions.ts file here. And then we have a dynamic route parameter or route segment, excuse me, um, reflected here with the parentheses slug. And that allows us to click on a title link on the home page and then route to a uh, the detail post single post detail page. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the basics of Next 14 and the roles of files and folders, I, I wrote an article about this on this subject. And don't worry, I'm going to leave all the collateral and the links talked about in this video in the description on the YouTube channel in relation to this video. The next thing I'd like to discuss is data fetching. Now, FaustJS uses the experimental Apollo client support for Next JS 14. The get client is a function that returns an Apollo client specifically for use in React server components. When making authenticated requests in the Next.js app router from an RSC, the get auth client is used instead, and both are part of the Faust experimental app router package. Let's break down auth in the example project here. So under the folder my account, Let's go into the page.tsx file and see what code we got in here. Now we're going to break this down line by line, so let's go over the syntax. Starting at the top of the file, we import the GraphQL template literal from Apollo client and the get auth client function from fast.js, as, as, as well as our please login function from the components directory in the project. Following the imports, we define an ASIN Synchronous fun default function named page, which will be the function used as the component. And then we get the Apollo client by calling the get auth client function asynchronously and storing it in the client variable. After that, we have an authentication check if the client instance is null or undefined. If it is, this means the user is not authenticated and we render a JSX fragment to inform the user that they must be authenticated. If they're not authenticated, it directs them to that login page, which is the component we imported, please log in. The next thing here is some data fetching we execute as we execute this GraphQL query asynchronously using the Apollo client instance where we fetched the login user's name, post IDs, and titles. Lastly, we have a return statement here that renders all our JSX and it shows the viewer's name, post titles on the authenticated viewer's page, home page. Let's look at what this looks like in the browser if we try to visit the my account page without being logged in. So let's go over to the browser here. I'm going to paste in that path. So there it is. It's telling us, hey, we're not authenticated. We need to be. So let's go ahead and log in and see what this looks like. I've already got my credentials in there. Logging in. Server side. Wait for it. And there are our post titles list, and this is the authenticated user's view. Stoked this works. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the login server action. And for those of you that aren't familiar, I'm super stoked about this functionality because in Next.js, server actions allow you to create functions that run on the server. Now, authentication in the experimental app router is powered by two utilities, on login and on logout. These are built on Next.js server actions and perform an action to log a user in and out using cookie caching and cookie removal respectively. So let's navigate to app login actions.ts here in Visual Studio Code, and here it is. And let's explain what's going on in this code. At the very top of the file here, we have the use server directive by Next.js to indicate that this component should only run on the server. In this case, we are using this for server-side auth handling without exposing sensitive logic to the client. Our imports are highlighted here next, 
and those are with an onLogin function from Faust for handling the login process and redirect from Next.js to perform server-side redirection to the My Account path. Now, following the imports, we have an async function called login action that will be called in response to a form submission. The function takes two parameters here, and it's prev previous data, which is of type any and is used to pass any previous state or data. Now, form data is an instance of form data and carries the data from the login form. Next, we call in the function on login with form data as its argument, and this returns a promise that resolves to the result of the login attempt. Then an if statement checks if the response object contains an error prop. If there's an error, the function returns the response object, which will include the error details on the client. Lastly, if there is no error, the redirect function is called to navigate the user to the My Account route, which is done server side telling the user's router to navigate to that path as a result of the login action being processed. All right then, now that we have our server action to handle the login functionality on the server, we can use it in a client-side component for the page UI that will show on the browser to allow the user to input their login credentials and submit the data to authenticate. Let's check this out, so let's navigate to the login page.tsx file, which is right under the actions.ts file we made. And let's go over the code. At the top of the file, we start with the use client directive. And this ensures and tells Next.js that this component will only run on the client. After that, we have our imports here. Now, the use forum state hook comes from the React DOM and allows you to update state based on the result of a form action. The use form status hook also comes from React DOM, and this gives you a status information of the last form submission. Both are still in experimental canary branches. Now the login action is from our actions.ts file we made in the same directory to handle that logic, login logic on the server. Following that, we have a functional component that, that defines a submit button which is responsible for rendering the submit button on the form. We then call the use form status hook to get the current status of the form. It returns an object with a pending prop that indicates whether a form submission is in progress. After that here, we have a return statement with our button element that displays the text login or loading depending on if a form submission is pending. This uses the pending status to disable the button during submission to prevent duplicate submissions. The page component right here is next, which serves as the main component for this page file. In this component, we initialize form state management using the use form state hook with login action as the handler for form submissions. At the bottom here, we have a return statement where we return some JSX. In the form element, it uses the action prop that calls a function to run on the server. In this case, our function being called is form action, which will handle the form submission on the server, and this is tied to the login action we are importing from our server action. Lastly here, we have the submit button component that we created at the top of this file, as well as a line that conditionally renders an error message if there is an error in the form state. Let's go ahead and see what this flow looks like on the browser. Going back to the browser, let's go ahead and log out here. Let's go to the home page. Hit login. There we have our input boxes with our login data, user data. Hit login, this is running on the server. and we are logged in. And that's what the flow looks like on the browser. We have gone over the boilerplate code that comes with the Faust.js app router support package. Now let's take it and build on top of it, writing our own server action. 
In this part of the video, we will create functionality in our application that allows the user who is authenticated to create a post in a drafted state and then see the drafted post on a page via WP GraphQL mutation. Now, in order to follow along in this part of the video, you can clone down and copy my GitHub repository, which I'll leave in the YouTube description on the post video. The first file we'll want to look at is our file running the server action located at the create post route segment within the app directory. We'll go to my account, create post route segment, and then we will go to the actions.ts file. And let's go over the code. At the top of the file, we use the directive to indicate that this code right here will run on the server. We import the necessary modules here and functions from the Apollo client and Next.js for our GraphQL client and redirect, as well as revalidation on the server for the new updated path when the user adds a post and gets redirected to that path. Then we define our GraphQL mutation called create post mutation, which is used to create a new post with a title and content in a draft status. This asynchronous function, create client, dynamically imports the Apollo client from the Faust experimental app router package module and returns it. The Apollo client will be used to make authenticated WP GraphQL requests. Then we have an add draft post server action that is asynchronous and does the following. It initializes the Apollo client by calling the previously defined create client function. It tries to execute the create post mutation using the provided form data, which should have the title and content of the post. If the mutation is successful, it logs the details of the created draft post. If any errors occur during the mutation, it throws an error indicating that the draft post could not be created. Regardless of success or failure, it will revalidate the cache for the path to my account's drafts and then redirect the user to the same path. Now that we have made our server action to run our WP GraphQL mutation and redirect, Every time a drafted post is successfully created, let's add it to the, our form so it works. The file that we're going to want to look at is the createPost.tsx file, and that's here within the route segment create post. Let's take a look at the code here, and starting at the top of the file, we import our submit button component that handles the form button submission and the draft add draft post function from the actions.ts file, which is the server action we created. Then we define the default function called create post, which renders a form that the user can input data into. In the form element right here, the action prop is set to the add draft post function to call that function and handle the form submission on the server as we did earlier with our login form. Lastly, we have our submit button down here, and um, that helps the user to press and submit the draft post data. All right, then, we have our WP GraphQL mutation that runs on the server to add a post in a drafted state. We also added a server action to our create post component to handle the post data form submissions. Stoked! Similar to how FaustJS earlier in this video, we created a submit button function in the same file as the login page, we will do so on the client in a separate file, which will live in the components directory. So let's check that out. Going over to the components directory here, we have our submit button.tsx file, and let's go over this code. At the top of the file, we have the use client directive, since this will run on the client. Then we import React from React, and then we import the use form status hook from React DOM, and this will provide us information about the status of a form, in our case, if it is pending or not. Following that, the submit button is defined as a functional component. Within the component, the use form status hook is invoked 
to get the status of a form. The hook returns an object and it destructures the pending property from this object. If pending is true, it indicates that the form is in the process of being submitted. Otherwise, it is false and there is no own ongoing operation. Lastly, we're going to return some JSX in a button element. Now, the disabled attribute right here is based on the pending value. If pending is true, then the button will be disabled. And if it is false, the button will be enabled. The button's inner content change is based on the pending status. If the form is in the process of being submitted, it shows submitting. Otherwise, it shows submit. So let's go ahead and check this out in the browser. I've already got the development server running, so let's go right over to the browser here. And I'm already logged in. As you can see, we have the authenticated viewers path right here of my account. Let's go to draft a post. And let's insert a post title here. Let's go Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, since that's the next movie in line here let's grab some content we'll just get the crawler we'll submit and it's submitting and then it should redirect us right here to the drafted post page stoked this works now just to make sure that we're also stoked on our wordpress admin let's make sure that graph wp graphql mutation that we fired off went into the drafted state in our WP admin backend. So let's go to post. And here's the draft. Awesome. Complete work completely works from front to back. The last thing I want to talk about is nested layouts in Next.js 14. It makes it really easy to nest layouts between route segments. This will allow us to keep a root layout that wraps nested layouts. In the example here, if you noticed, we have a different layout and nav bar for my accounts route segment. So within the my accounts route segment here, we have its own layout and a nav bar. And then in the root of the application in the app directory, we also have a uh, layout for the home page. So if you notice within the browser, let me pull it back up. When we have this authenticated view here of my accounts, we have the Darth Vader nav bar and image here. When we log out and go to the home page, we see Yoda. See, so this is awesome and it comes in handy when you have a use case like this example where you have a public home page where any user can view it with a nav bar and layout, which would be the parent. But when a user registers and becomes authenticated on an app, you want to give them a different experience. So then you have a different nav bar and layout so that they have different access to features on what you would like to provide in the authenticated view. Wrapping things up here, Faust.js with its app router support for Next 14 is a new version of the headless WordPress framework on top of the latest version of Next. It introduces authentication, handling out of the box, new ways to handle data, route segmentation and files, as well as rendering methods. Overall, it makes easier for devs to have a quicker time to hello world when creating headless WordPress applications. As always, stoked to hear your feedback. Hit us up in our Discord or comment on the YouTube description and comments on this channel. And again, see you next time. Happy coding.